morning. My name is Rick Rollins, and this is the Todd Engine. In 1995-96, uh, a uh, group of us got together and acquired this engine from North Star Steel in Youngstown here and dismantled it, moved it, put it in storage for about 10 years. Uh, in 2007, we uh, successfully relocated the engine, bringing it over here to the east side of Youngstown and reassembling it and building a uh, building around it. Well, in, uh, in two years, 2014, this engine turns 100 years old, and in commemoration of that 100th anniversary, I would like to re restore this engine to operational condition. Uh, not on steam, but being turned by an electric motor, but uh, everything on here I'd like to see operational, the valve gear, all the things moving, the wheel spinning, of course, uh, and uh, to get from where we're at now in 2012 to having this operational We still have about 150 cubic yards of concrete to pour under the engine to, uh, to build a good foundation for it. We still have to uh, finish the building, uh, put the rest of the train, the train runways in here, get the train to rewire, operational. Uh, we have a little bit of other building work to do. And besides the mechanical and the cosmetic restoration of the engine itself. So this video here is going to be the first one in a series that uh, we will produce and place on YouTube as we do the restoration work. So you can follow along on our progress as we take this engine from just sitting here in static condition to uh, fully operational condition. So uh, subscribe to this channel and you will receive notices of each video as they come online. Uh, not only this series will serve to document what we're doing, but also to help educate about some of the techniques and processes that we're going to use in the restoration of this engine. So um, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the series, and uh, if you can, if you uh, would like to participate in this project by volunteering or uh, making a contribution, or uh, would you just like to come out here and, uh, and see the engine itself? Get in touch with me at rick at toddengine.org or at uh, toddengine.org website. We're just going to do a little walk around of the engine to see the condition uh, here in March of 2012. Uh, starting here with the uh, high pressure cylinder of the Todd engine and looking back towards the uh, high pressure bed plate and the main bearing and the uh, six foot diameter shaft governor and the 20 foot diameter 75 ton flywheel. Uh, up above is our 1893 vintage Morgan Crane. Uh, this is crane number 613 and as far as any of us know, including Morgan Engineering, this is the oldest uh, operable electric overhead crane in the country. So we've got a little bit of rewiring to do to get it operational. We also have crane runways to put in uh, and as soon as we raise the money to uh, purchase them, I will uh, get those brought in and put in. Now Swinging around here to the uh, low pressure side, the low pressure main bearings and the eccentrics have to be put in. And then swinging around here to the uh, 68 inch diameter cordless cylinder. And then down the stairs here. William Todd Company, Youngstown, Ohio. This is a product of 1914 built uh, in downtown uh, at the uh, site of uh, what is now the United Engineering Buildings, which the city is intent on destroying. There's our flywheel and our crane. Now as we uh, walk around the side here, We 
we still have to uh, reinstall the uh, uh, cross heads and uh, connecting rods. And uh, if you look underneath here, you can see this space between the bottom of the bed plate and the uh, and the concrete. It's about 30 inches, 36 inches. We have to place rebar in there and pour this full of concrete to give this engine a, a decent base. Uh, the reason it's setting up like this is because when I brought the engine over here, didn't have enough money to put a foundation and move the engine. I could do one or the other. So I thought having the engine here up on blocks is better than having a foundation with no engine sitting on it. So some of the realities of trying to do this without uh, loads of funding. Uh, this is just mainly myself and two or three other individuals doing this. I spend a lot of time here. So, you know, this is not a well-endowed project. We receive no government money. We receive nothing but donations from people who want to see this happen. Uh, trying to preserve a little bit of Youngstown's heritage. Uh, there's the uh, coupling for the uh, drive shafts. Uh, this engine drove a six-stand rolling mill at Youngstown Sheet and Tube, and off each end of this engine was a drive shaft, 12-inch diameter drive shaft that went off 150 feet to six gearboxes, and then sent the power into the uh, six-stand merchant mill. 4,000 horsepower engine ran at 75 RPM operated from 1914 up up until the plant closed in 1979. It's a flywheel hub, wheel itself. The uh, video doesn't do justice to the size of this engine. Uh, it, it is the largest stationary steam engine to be moved for preservation in the country. And as we come along here to the high pressure side, there's the other uh, coupling, walking down along here. Now this here is an 1890 Olsen uh, tensile testing machine. It was donated by uh, Morgan Engineering. It was probably used to um, test the steel that was used in the construction of our crane. Um, it's uh, quite rare as it has the beam scale instead of a dial on here. So we intend to get this operational as well. I'd like to be able to pull tensile samples for uh, uh, for guests and, and for educational purposes. And there you can see the, uh, the large gaping hole we have to fill with concrete. And coming around here to the uh, front of the engine, there's the other builder's plate and we get an overall view of what we have here. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of work ahead of us here, but uh, I hope we can get enough support and help from the local community to, um, to make this a successful project. It would certainly be nice to have this operational again and to be able to come over here and start the engine up for visitors so that uh, people can see, you know, what we used to do here in Youngstown. You know. This is just one of hundreds of engines that the William Todd Company built in 40 years. Um, it's actually one of their medium-sized engines. Well, here we are up on the uh, platform of the Morgan Crane. Uh, there's another video I have on my channel of this crane in operation before we dismantled, moved it, and reassembled it here in the building. So, uh, in that video, we were down there in the cab. So this time we're up here on the main platform. This crane was built in 1893 for uh, Otis Steel Lakeside Works in Cleveland. Installed up there, used until after World War II, when it was uh, taken down and sold to Jennings uh, Manufacturing in Maysbury, Ohio. It was shortened about two feet, moved over here, and uh, reassembled and used until, uh, what was it, uh, 2009, when it was donated to the Youngstown Steel Heritage Foundation. And we moved it uh, over here, put it in this building. The building's built for the crane. At the very same time, uh, Morgan Engineering got involved and helped us out by uh, making up a new set of drive wheels for the crane. 
and doing some machine work for us and also uh, supporting us in any way that they can, which we greatly appreciate. The, the trolley is not original. The trolley was built by Otis Steel to replace the original trolley. This crane so old that originally did not have wire ropes. It had uh, chain. Now we do have the original block. The shivs were changed out from the chain shivs over to wire rope shivs. And uh, so the original, probably the original hook from 1893 we still have. The main drive motor main drive shaft. The, uh, the rails were rolled by the Edgar Thompson Works of Carnegie Steel in 1893, about a month before the Great Homestead Steel Strike. As we come up onto the platform here, we now look down onto the, uh, onto the engine itself. And some of the miscellaneous tools and supplies and junk that we have that we've salvaged out of various industrial plants so we'll eventually put to use here. And there's the uh, main hoist motor. Over there we have the uh, trolley motor. Right where I'm standing is where the uh, main drum is going to go in, which of course has not been installed yet. Um, this is just your typical overhead crane technology from the 1890s on up until uh, 40s or 50s. Our, uh, our building here, this is a new building built by Shenango Steel Buildings in uh, West Middlesex. And basically everything we have here is locally made. The building was made in West Middlesex. The crane come from uh, Alliance. The engines from Youngstown. Uh, even the uh, the rails for the crane runway were rolled in 1906 at the Ohio Works. Uh, and we recently acquired those rails out of another building, and those are going to come up here. So even the rails that this is going to run on is going to be locally made. So everything here, I mean, this is the, the true Youngstown Steel Museum. Everything in here is is from the Youngstown Steel industry. So. Um, you know, it, it's quite an exciting project here. I, I certainly would like to get this done. We can get this open to the public. And now for a little uh, tour around the outside of the property. This is the front of our building. And over here, this is half of a 175-ton teeming ladle. It was built by Pollock in Youngstown in 1963 for the Duquesne Works, the U.S. Steel. We acquired it last year and uh, moved it up here. The idea is to take this ladle and to kind of set it up against the front of the building here uh, for, a, uh, for a display. Uh, and we had to, we could only save half of it, so we cut it in half and brought it up. This is a uh, ingot mold manufactured by Elwood Engineered Castings in Hubbard. It was uh, donated by uh, David Berensfeld of uh, Elwood Group. So it, it uh, came over here and it also will become part of this, uh, this display. And uh, so we walk up this way up towards the side of the property. A couple of uh, spare traction motors for a scale car from uh, the uh, Steubenville North plant of Wheeling Pittsburgh Steels. Also connecting rods off of a cordless engine that we're preserving out of that plant. Uh, and in the background there is a 70 ton GE center cab locomotive. It was a switch engine at Elwood Engineered Castings. Uh, from the uh, from the early 80s on up until uh, 2007 when it was donated. Under the tarps are the two uh, motor generator sets uh, for the uh, for the engine. We still have to put that back together. So I swing around here, take a little look down here. These are the connecting rods and cross heads for the Todd engine. Each one of these weighs about 16,000 pounds. Uh, they're uh, quite massive. <laughs> over here at the uh, ladle again and in the backgrounds are white oliver uh, uh, backhoe 
which uh, was uh, donated and rebuilt. Now we use that as our main piece of equipment. And walking back around here now, we've got several pieces of uh, equipment and various artifacts that we've collected. That's the uh, main throttle valve for the Todd engine. Here is a little bottle framed engine. There's the, uh, the locomotive. A little homemade winch that was in the uh, plate mill at uh, Briar Hill Works. That'll be restored for this display at some point. And here we have another uh, Youngstown Industrial Gem. This is a cling type pot metal car. This was built by Pollock. Uh, it was invented by a fellow by the name of Fred Kling. And Mr. Kling from 1903 on was uh, chief engineer for the Carnegie Steel Youngstown District plant. Mr. Kling designed the rolling mills at the Ohio Works, designed the rolling mills at McDonald. Uh, he was also a very prolific inventor of blast furnace improvements, and in the mid-20s he came up with this design for a hot metal car. So this was uh, invented by a Youngstowner, built by Youngstowners. There were several of these were used at the Ohio Works. This particular one came from Pittsburgh. This is the last example of a Kling-type car still in its original configuration. So we're quite happy to have that up here.